QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Advanced customer payment or unearned revenue method number two. Let's do it within two. It's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice Problem. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area, view drop down, hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open left side, reports drop down, company and financial, PNL, profit and loss, range change, 0101232, 123123, and customize the reports to the fonts and numbers to change the fonts and numbers to 14 okay yes please okay then reports drop down again the company and financial balance sheet standard customize it ranging 010123 to 12 to 12 hold on a second i got ahead of myself 010123 to 12 31 2, 3 fonts and the numbers up to 14 okay yes please okay that's the setup process we do every time now we want to think once again about an advanced type payment situation to see that let's go back to the home page in prior presentations we looked at a scenario where for example we receive money before we do the work which is unnatural because most businesses have to do the work before they receive money before they get paid in which case they have to have an invoice or they receive payment at the same time such as a restaurant or something in which case you have a sales receipt but some industries like magazines possibly then any kind of app that's going to be on a subscription model for example or types of companies that are going to have a down payment on work they're going to do in the future possibly for custom jobs or to order something like a guitar in our case might have a situation where we get the money first now last time we looked at a very useful scenario or useful method to use from a bookkeeping standpoint it's probably the most natural method to use which would be just to enter the receive payment when you get the payment even though it's out of order and then apply the payment to the invoice by doing that you're going to end up with a negative receivable when you have the receive payment which isn't exactly correct from a financial statements point of view but works quite well logistically because it makes it quite easy for us to then match out that credit to the invoice we make in the future because the accounts receivable account is the account that then has the sub accounts for the detail of the customer so for example last time if i went to the customer center we imagined for mr anderson that we had a prepayment which was recorded with a payment of three hundred dollars and then we invoiced for the full amount and applied the credit to the 300 and gives us this nice balance which is perfect from a reporting standpoint however from the point between when we got this advance payment and when we made the invoice our reporting was a little off because we had a negative receivable instead of a positive liability this time we'll look at a method that allows us to have a positive liability an unearned revenue account but it's not as as quite as nice on the bookkeeping side so it's got some pros and cons i quite like this method and again we can use adjusting entries at the end of the period to make the adjustments to make things as easy as possible like on the bookkeeper uh that way uh, but there might be some situations and it'll kind of depend whether it's a like a one-off situation or whether you're in the kind of, of business that has all of your sales as pre uh pre-sales like unearned revenue or like a magazine company or an app store for example so this time we're going to use the sales receipt so we're going to imagine same scenario someone comes in they say hey look 
I, I want this guitar, but I can't pay you the whole thing now. And we're like, okay, we can put a down payment on it and we will create a, a sales receipt instead of just the receive payment. Also note that if someone had a scenario like that, you might create, instead of an invoice, you might create like an estimate and you might then say, okay, look, this is the guitar that you want, like whatever, an ELP. And then you might use this to help you to determine how much of a down payment you want to create. And that estimate could also give you some idea that they, they came in earlier and we can create the invoice from the estimate and then we can apply the credit to it. So just to kind of keep that in mind, but I'm not going to do an estimate here. We're just going to do, we're going to say, okay, we, we want a down payment then, and I'm going to enter it with a uh, create sales receipt instead of a receive payment this time. We're going to imagine this is from string music. So that's the customer. It's going to go into undeposited funds. We'll imagine it's going to be cash. And this is going to be on the 27th, we'll say, of 2023. Everything else looks good. Now, what I'm going to do is set up a new item down here because I'm not actually selling the guitar. What I want to do is set up an item that will apply this money to a liability account instead of an income account. So it's a little bit of a twist with the item we'll set up. So I'm going to call it a customer customer deposit. This is what I'm going to call with the item because it's a, you might call it, you know, a prepayment, unearned revenue item. I'm going to call it a customer deposit on our guitar. So I'll say tab. QuickBooks doesn't have it, so I'm going to set it up. I want to set it up. I'm just going to make it a service item because I do not want to have the, the tax applied to it. I'm going to make it customer deposit, and I'll copy the name here. I'll put it in the description. And the rate, I'll keep the rate as is because I don't know what the rate will be. It will be dependent upon what the customer does. I want it to be non-taxable. So it's going to be non-taxable. And the account, instead of going to an income account like sales, I'm going to create a new account, make it a liability account of unearned revenue. So I'll hit the drop down. I'm going to say this is going to be a liability, other current liability. It's a liability because they're paying us and I owe them the money back or the guitar in the future. So I owe them something in the future. So I'm going to call it unearned revenue, which hopefully I spelled right. I think, I don't know. I think that's right. So current liability, unearned revenue. That looks good. Okay. Okay. And then I'm just going to, for our practice problem purposes, say $100. There it is. So we've got no sales tax on it because we, this is a prepayment. $100, what's this going to do? Well, it's a sales receipt. It's going to put the money into undeposited funds. The other side will be driven by the item, the item usually driving to some sales account, but this time we made it to go to a liability account. That's the, tr that's the trick. That's the twist. So I'm going to say save it and close it. Save it and close it. And then I can go to my balance sheet. And now it properly recorded the fact that we've got the cash going up, double clicking the cash. We've got the uh, sales receipt here. Where did I actually it went into unearned revenue? What am I doing? Unearned revenue. What are you doing? Goes into unearned revenue right there, the hundred dollars. The other side goes into not a revenue account, but now this liability account that we just made up here, unearned revenue, no impact on the income statement at this point. There we have it. That's great. And then if I look at my sub ledger, so this did it properly. If I did the other method, it would have made a negative receivable, which isn't exactly right for reporting purposes. So now let's go to the customer center, looking at the bookkeeping side of things, which I don't think is quite as clear as uh, the other method. So there's a pros and cons, there's trade-offs between the two. So if I'm in string music, we've got the sales receipt that shows here, and that's the advanced payment. But the fact that it's recorded as a sales receipt, which is usually the form to record something when we receive payment at the same point in time we do the work, can be a little bit confusing to know that that is actually an advance that we have to take into consideration when making the invoice for this customer in the future. As opposed to when we did the Mr. Anderson, the prior method, we had the payment which was the $300 here, which shows as a normal payment process, which is usually done after an invoice. But the fact it was done before the invoice allows us to easily link to the invoice that we create in the future. So now let's let's go through the invoicing process. So if I go to string music, the next step would be able would be to make the invoice. So now let's say that 
we're actually going to complete the sale at this point in time. We've got the advance. Now we're going to actually sell the guitar. So let's go to then the home page to do that. And let's go to the create invoice. And this is going to be for string music. Tabbing through. Let's keep it at the 27. And there we go. Terms. Let's just say net 30 on the terms as has been our custom. We're going to just pretend that we sold an EPSP here and one of those and $600 tax is applied. Notice the tax is going to be the 5% or $30. Now, if we had the other method, uh, we would be then applying the credit. But we don't have a credit to apply in this method because we, we didn't want to have a negative receivable. A credit kind of represents the fact that there's a negative receivable or something that's not applied out to an invoice, a payment not applied out to an invoice. So we can't use that same linkage, but I know that we had the $100 advance payment. So I want to put it in there with the use of the item. So I can use the same item we set up last time, which is the customer customer deposit. And But this time, I'm going to put it in there as a negative. And we know that that customer deposit, we set it up last time to be going to unearned revenue. So this will be decreasing the unearned revenue, bringing it down to zero. It's a non-taxable item. Therefore, the $30 is still represented on down below. Note that the balance here now of the invoice is uh, 530, kind of taking into consideration the customer deposit. Whereas in the prior method, we, we saw that the payment would be applied down here at kind of like the bottom of the invoice. So it's a little bit different in just the logistics of how it's going to be showing on the invoices. So what's this going to do? It's an invoice. So accounts receivable is going to be going up by the 530. The other side is going to go to revenue. Revenue is going to be going up by this item, which is driving to a revenue account of the $600, not taking into consideration the $30 tax. This item, however, is not driving to a revenue account. But as we saw when we set it up, it's driving to unearned revenue. It's going to bring unearned revenue back down to zero. We also note that the sales tax is going to go up by the $30. We know that inventory is going to go down by this item, not by the 600, but known by the system, but by the item in the system, the cost of goods sold is also going to go up by the same amount. The net impact on the income statement will be the uh, increase in the revenue from this item minus the cost of goods sold. We also note that the sub ledger should be going up for the accounts receivable for the customer of string music by the 530. And then the inventory is going to go down driven by the EPSB for the one unit and the related cost to it. Let's save it and close it. And so I'm going to say yes, let's save that and let's go to the balance sheet, check it out and see if that is indeed the case double clicking on the AR. Here's the invoice for the 530. So there's the invoice for the 530. I close that out. I can go back. Let's close this back out. Let's go to the profit and loss on the PML. Double clicking the sales is on the books for the 600. That's the 600 here by this item. Closing that back out. We can go back to uh, the balance sheet. We also know that the unearned revenue, which is down here, is now gone because it's a zero balance. Let's add it back in by customizing advanced. Let's go to active items. OK, OK, so I can drill down on it. We've got unearned revenue. So double clicking on it. So it went up by the $100. And then when we invoiced, it went back down, driven by that item, closing it out, closing it out. We see that the sales tax is impacted by that $30, which is going to two different uh, locations, the state and the local, closing it out. And then we also know that the inventory is going down, double clicking it by the 480, which is driven by this item. And we know that the cost of goods sold, if I go back to the PNL, cost of goods sold is impacted here by that same 480, closing it out. Now, if I go back to the balance sheet, so everything works quite nicely from, if you were looking at this from just a debits and credit standpoint as an accountant, you say, well, that works you know, quite a lot better. But from a bookkeeping standpoint, it still is not quite as clean, it seems to me, as the first method. So if I go to the customer center for string music here, I can see, okay, 
I've, I've got my sales receipt for the $100 that I received the one the $100 on, but note that the invoice here is actually reporting, we're recording the invoice in the customer information net of the $100, as opposed to the other method, which I think is a little bit more clean to see when you see in the customer detail. When I go to Anderson Guitars, we have the invoice reported here at the full amount, meaning we reported the income invoice at 1,365, and then we netted out the $300 against it. So you can tie those two things out. I could say this was the invoice amount was the full amount uh, minus the payment that was that was uh, received. And these two things are basically linked together. That's not quite so clear over here because the sales when I see the invoice, it's recording after I accounted for using this kind of funny item, the $100 decreasing it back down for the 530 instead of recording it at the full amount, which would be the 630 minus, you know, the $100 basically uh, prepayment. So I don't think it's quite as clean. It's not quite as clean to see the link between these two items because these two items don't usually aren't usually related because they both represent sales rather than the payment which is usually the thing that ties to an invoice form so the bottom line to me is i think method number one is actually easier from a bookkeeping standpoint and i think if the bookkeeper you know likes that if we're liking that from an accounting internal accounting standpoint then we might want to use that method and then make periodic adjustments at the end of the month for any uh, to, to adjust the accounts receivable and unearned revenue as we'll see. But uh, in some methods, in some companies, maybe it would be advantageous to use the second method to report everything uh, properly in terms of a financial reporting basically as we go. And that might depend on what kind of advance payments we're getting. Are they going to be uh, deposits on guitars like we're talking about here or is it like an advance payment like all of our payments are advance payments because we have a subscription model or something uh, like that might have an impact on your decision processes all right but that's the general idea and we will still if i we will still go go to some of these negative balances here for eric music and here and we'll see how those will be impacted when we do the uh, period end adjusting processes in future sections or presentations or course. So let's go and go to the reports drop down and account and taxes. Let's just take a look at the trial balance to see where we stand as of now, going from 010123 to 123. Let's customize the report and fonting and numbering and let's bring it to 16. Okay, yes and okay. So if your numbers tie out, great. If they do not tie out, then possibly change the dates see if it's a date range thing drill down on it make any changes necessary at the end of this month data input will go through the transaction detail report helping us to hone down drill down in on any problems at that time <laughs>